stop. You cannot come into the lab in your condition. Go home, get some rest, and come back when you're ready to work. When you're coming to the lab, please remember the following. Don't be under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Be well rested and ready to work and show up on time. I'm ready to work. Now Bubba, that's great. But first we need to go over some proper attire and some general lab rules. Your shoes. You need to have closed toe shoes on. And you need to be wearing long pants. We want to protect your legs and your feet, not chop them off. Now, when you work with the equipment, you need to make sure you have your shirt tucked in. And you need to roll up your sleeves. And Bubba, the jewelry. You can't wear jewelry because if it gets caught in the equipment, your arm would be gone. Now, if you decide to grow out your hair, make sure you wear it up. Okay? Go home. Anytime you enter the lab, you should always know where the eyewash station, the exits, and the first aid kits are. Other general lab rules are, do not work alone in the lab. Use care when working with hand tools. Clean spills immediately. No children are allowed in the lab. No horseplay. Keep hallways, corridors, and exits clear of supplies, trash, or any other objects. All right, class, you know what your assignment is. Make sure you have your trust completed by the beginning of next class period. Got it. Bubba, what are you doing? Building a truss. Right. Why don't we uh, put this stuff back and then we'll go sit down and make a plan. Show Bubba how to use this, right? Yeah. Thank you. Watch the placement of your hands. If in doubt, use the push pad or push stick. Also, never brush dust off the joiner with your hand. Make sure when you are feeding material into the joiner, you're not doing it too fast or too slow. Feeding material in level will help prevent kickbacks and damage to your material. Second, Bubba, do you know how to use this right? Well, no, not really. No? Well then why don't we go ask the teacher to show us how to do this correctly? Okay. When you first walk up to the piece of equipment, make sure there's no material laying on the ground or in the work environment around the saw. 
Next of all, make sure that if you have a longer piece of material that you have some support for it so it doesn't come back and end up hitting you in the face. You can either use a piece of material to help block it up or grab one of your lab partners to assist you in supporting. Lastly, make sure that you have a good grip on the material itself while you're cutting and make sure that your hand on the material is out of the danger zone from the saw. Make sure you also have a good grip upon the saw when you're going through it and make sure the saw comes to a complete stop before you retract it from the material. But let's go talk to the teacher. <sighs> Hand placement is still important. If the stock you're working with is three inches or less, you will use a push stick to keep your hands away from danger. Also make sure you stand to the side of your stock and not directly behind the blade. That way you are out of the line of fire if a kickback happens. Make sure the guard is installed. This has several features that will help prevent an accident. There are grippers that will prevent kickback and the guard will help prevent you from getting your fingers in the blade. Well, you see, I was practicing a fundamental motion in which I could saw when the power was off. No. Teacher? Yeah. Okay. You need to watch your fingers. The blade is very sharp. Make sure the guide is lowered to less than a quarter of an inch above the material. This will assist in keeping the blade straight when cutting. Do not force the material into the saw. Let the saw do the work. If for some reason the blade has been replaced, make sure you check that the teeth of the blade are turning the correct way. If you have any questions, please read the owner's manual or ask the instructor for assistance. Bubba, 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 before you do anything, do you even know what you're doing? Yeah, sawing. Really? Teacher again? Teacher again. If the saw starts to bind, do not force it through. Let go of the trigger and the saw will stop turning. Then remove the saw from the material. Be mindful of what material is near your cutting station. If there are objects that could get in the way, move them before you start to cut. Always cut on solid surface. Never cut with the material only laying on the ground or across your lap. Bubba, 
you know the drill. John! Make sure you are using the correct drill bit for the job. Using the wrong drill bit can cause damage to your material. Use clamps or a vise to secure the material to the support table. That way your hands are away from the drill bit. When setting up the drill press, make sure your material is centered on the support table. That way you don't drill into the table. If you have any questions, please read the owner's manual or ask the instructors for assistance. Huh? Bubba, no. What if you would have hit your face with this hammer? We would have had to take another trip to the ER. Now let's go sit down and we'll have John show you how to use these. You need to make sure you're using the correct tool for the job and using the tool correctly. Always work from a solid work surface. If you're using any cutting tool, cut away from your body. If you have any questions, please read the owner's manual or ask the instructor for assistance. Baba. That looks great. You did a really good job. And you've learned a lot of safety things over this week. But remember, if you ever have a question, you can always ask your instructor for help. So good job, Bubba.